Ladies and gentlemen, this year, instead of charging admission, uh, we are appealing for uh, your monetary donations um, to Ballon Money Food Bank. I think it's the time of the year when we should all try and help those less fortunate than ourselves. So basically, you can make a donation through Parent Pay, uh, where details of how to pay will be available. And please give what you can. Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to this, our virtual carol concert. We've had a lot of fun making the concert on all our little spare moments of break time, lunch time and after school. And we just hope that you will be able to sit down, relax and enjoy what we've brought to you this evening. All that remains is for me to wish you a merry little Christmas and a very safe and happy new year from both of us.
John chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He has with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to everyone. Was coming into the world, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as I was sitting last night just wondering about what to say, what my Christmas message would be, I stumbled upon this uh, <laughs> wee piece here, and it's advice from an old farmer, uh, not from myself, obviously, but uh, there were some lines in this I thought is very worth sharing. So here goes, I hope you can find something there that resonates with you. So this is advice from an old farmer. Your fences need to be horse high, pig tight, and build strong. Keep skunks and bankers at a distance. Life is simpler when you plough around the stump. Words that so soak into your ears are whispered, not yelled. Meanness doesn't just happen overnight. Forgive your enemies, it messes up their heads. Do not corner something that you know is meaner than you. And it doesn't take a very big person to carry a grudge. You cannot unsay a cruel word. And every path has a few puddles. When you wallow with pigs, expect to get dirty. The best sermons are lived, not preached. Most of the stuff people worry about is never going to happen anyway. And don't judge folks by their relatives. Remember that silence is sometimes the best answer. Live a good, honourable life. Then when you get older and think back, you can enjoy it a second time round. Don't interfere with something that isn't bothering you. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. The biggest troublemaker you'll probably ever have to deal with watches you from the mirror every morning. Always drink upstream from the herd. Good judgment comes from experience. And a lot of that comes from bad judgment. Letting the cat out of the bag is a whole lot easier than trying to put it back in again. And if you think you're a person of some influence, try ordering someone else's dog around. And finally, live simply, love generously, care deeply, and speak kindly, and leave the rest to God. So you thought you got rid of me, but here I am back again. Um, I've been asked to choose a poem, and the one I've selected is The Journey of the Magi, and it is by T.S. Eliot. He gives voice to the three wise kings who are making their way to Bethlehem to see the Christ child. The difficult journey is described as a hard time, words that we, I think, can relate to after everything we've been through in 2020. It is a poem that also shows how hard it is to live in uncertainty. And again, that is something we all understand in these very trying times. So now the poem itself, The Journey of the Magi. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey, 
and such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels, galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women. And the night fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then, at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, wet, below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a watermill beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at an open door dicing for pieces of silver and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information. And so we continued and arriving at evening, not a moment too soon finding the place. It was, you may say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember. And I would do it again, but set down this, set down this, where we led all that way for birth or death. Th there was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We returned to our palaces, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here, in the old dispensation, with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. Initially, this poem might seem like a very odd choice for Christmas, with its references to hardship and even death, anticipating the crucifixion in the three trees on the low sky. But the death of Christ heralds his resurrection and our redemption, the ultimate joy. The death wished for in the final line of the poem hints at a move away from the old world and the challenges that come with preparing for a better future. That echoes how we all feel just now as we hope for an improved life in 2021 and an end to the trials of this year. The successful journey of the Magi is celebrated on the Feast of the Epiphany on the 6th of January, in the first month of a new year. Thus, the wonderful thing about this poem is that it points us to a positive future while also witnessing the birth of the baby Jesus. So I want to wish us all a safe and happy Christmas however low-key it must be this year. In addition, I hope we can all look forward to the promise of 2021, the end of the old dispensation, and the hope of health and happiness with our loved ones. Over the last nine months, we have learned to value what is really important. So let us take that forward into the days that lie ahead. For in the words of Susan Coolidge, every day is a fresh beginning, Listen, my soul, to the glad refrain, and spite of old sorrows and older sinning, troubles forecasted and possible pain, take heart with the day and begin again. Thank you.
most determining. Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what is dwelling? And bring me wine, bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I will see him dine when we bear them thither.
Christmas by Edgar Guest. A man is at his finest towards the finish of the year. He is almost what he should be when the Christmas season is here. Then he's thinking more of others than he's thought the months before and the laughter of his children is a joy worth toiling for. He is less a selfish creature than at any other time. When the Christmas spirit rules him he comes close to the sublime. When it's Christmas man is bigger and I'm better in part. He is keener for the service that is prompted by the heart. All the petty thoughts and narrow seem to vanish for a while, and the true reward he's seeking is the glory of a smile. Then for others he is toiling, and somehow it seems to me that at Christmas he is almost what God wanted him to be. If I had to paint a picture of a man, I think I'd wait till he fought his selfish battles and had put aside his hate. I'd not catch him at his labours when his thoughts are all of health on the long days in the dreary when he's striving for himself. I'd not take him when he's sneering, when he's scornful or depressed, but I'd look for him at Christmas when he's shining at his best. Man is ever in a struggle and he's oft misunderstood. There are days the worst is in him is the master of the good. But at Christmas, kindness rules him and he puts himself aside. His petty hates are vanquished and his heart is opened wide. Oh, I don't know how to say it, but somehow it seems to me that at Christmas, man is almost what God sent them here to be.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, at this special time of the year, when we meet together to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for keeping us and our loved ones safe during this awful coronavirus epidemic. Bless all in our school community, pupils, parents, school staff and governors, and friends, and help all of us to enjoy Christmas together with our families and loved ones. May we all act responsibly over the holiday period to ensure the safety of ourselves and others in the days and weeks ahead. Be with those who have been directly affected by COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones, or those who, with family members who are suffering from COVID-19. May your hand be upon the senior members of our, of our community who may be lonely this year due to enforced isolation. Lord, as we look forward to the, the new year, give us hope that this awful pandemic will be defeated and we can again enjoy a return to a normal lifestyle. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed our first ever Virgil Carroll con concert. Thank you to all who have taken part, and a special thanks to Samuel Michael Moyle and Joyce Watson, our former pupils, for recording this event and putting it together. My sincere thanks to all who have taken part and provided us with some much-needed Christmas cheer. To Mrs Montgomery, Mr McGavitt, and all who have helped put this together, and to all our talented musicians and singers, thank you so much, and I hope you, ladies and gentlemen, thoroughly enjoyed it as much as I did. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to conclude by wishing you all a safe and happy Christmas. And don't forget to look out for each other. Thank you. With glowing hearts by his cradle we stand.